Hello everybody! Welcome, welcome! We are back for some more of the Forever Lock Challenge here today with Pokemon Shield. Hope everyone is having a fantastic, fantastic day today. Um, my apologies for- <laughs> Thank you so much for the sub with Prime Star. Um, my apologies for, for the, for the delay the last couple of days. Just had a lot, a lot, a lot of junk going on, but uh, we're back, we're good, we're ready, and I'm excited to jump back into Galar. I hope you all are as well. <laughs> so yeah, very good stuff. Um, welcome in Sachi, Arcanine, Janita, and Star. Uh, thanks for being here. Oh, and Aqua uh, as well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, we're we're getting back to business. Uh, we're basically right where we left off. I, d I thought about doing some like training in between, but one, I kind of ran out of time, and two... Um, it's funny, considering I was gone for two additional days that I shouldn't have been gone for, but still. Um, yeah, I just, I, I just, I didn't think about it until too late, and besides, we're not, like, that far behind anyway, so it's, it's all good. Um, but yeah, so, um, we are going to, we're going to make it, um, we're gonna make it to Milo today and take on the first gym of Galar. That's definitely, uh, in the cards. Um, and I think I think we can do it. The, the squad is looking really good. I don't need, really need to go. Well, maybe I do need to go into depth here. Let's let's look at the squad. Let's look at the squad real fast. Uh, we have Pain here with the scope lens. Um, ooh, hustle. Oh, hustle's not very good actually. <laughs> the accuracy uh, accuracy is kind of doo doo. Um, earthquake, thunder shock, dragon claw, and thunder wave. That's a really busted starting move set for that uh, that little friend. Um, we have symbol, of course, our starter with scratch, razor leaf, branch poke, and taunt. Um, Clunk, our lovely eventual Clang, as I recall. Uh, Thundershock, uh, yeah, it says on the layout. <laughs> Very good. Um, Thundershock, Vice Grip, Charge, Beep, and Charge. Uh, we have Slow Queen, uh, Acid, Yawn, Confusion, and Eerie Spell. Uh, we have Flumbus, eventual Greedent, with Stuffed Cheek, Stockpile, Sea Bomb, and Iron Tail. Um, and of course, good old Double Decker with Bug Bite, Mud Slap, Vice Grip, and Bite. Um, so yes, very good. Looking, looking quite solid there. Um, I'm a fan. Welcome in, uh, Bolting Blazy. Good to see you again. Um, and Thorough as well. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for coming in. Um, yeah, so we're gonna pop into Galar Mine number one. So let's, uh, let's, let's get it. How's everybody feeling today? I did not get very good sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> but it's certainly much better than it was um, the day I had to cancel as a, as a result of, uh, of the sleep problem. <laughs> My sleep is so terrible lately, guys. It really is truly awful. I, um, I'm i in this, like, like non-stop, like, uh, if I can explain it briefly to you. Um, I'm in this, non this non-stop non -stop cycle of I try to sleep, I can't. I wind up staying up all night, like like through no fault of my own. I'll be like laying there for hours. Um, I, I, w I just won't be able to sleep for like hours. It's like okay, cool, and then it's just like all right, well I'm gonna be fucking miserable, so I'm gonna have to sleep as soon as I, as soon as my body allows, which is usually like six or seven or eight in the morning. Um, and then you know, so like you know, for example, the day that I str I was supposed to stream that I I couldn't, I was just like well, I can't freaking sleep. I can't frick or I can't freaking stream like like this. I'm I'm miserable right now. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So it's just like okay, cool. So this is this is a problem. Um, so the cycle that I keep experiencing is, I I'm like all right, this next day I'm gonna get my sleep schedule on track. So I take I take a melatonin, um, at around evening time when I when when I should go to sleep, and that works. The problem is, um, so like, like I'll go to sleep and then I'll actually sleep through the night and that's great. But the problem is that when, every time I take a melatonin, even a half melatonin, I had to take these little dissolvable melatonin tablets every, like every time I actually use melatonin, um, I'll have a half, a, half a dissolvable tablet and it will be enough to knock me out. But then the entire next day I am utterly miserable. <laughs> Um, and that's, that's the problem is like, it's a, it's, so it's like, I don't take melatonin, I don't sleep. And then I, then the next day I'm miserable because I haven't had any sleep. And then I take a melatonin and then I'm miserable the whole next day just because I'm groggy from the melatonin. It's like, I just can't win, you know? <laughs> so it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's been, it's been a nonstop cycle of trying to like make my way through that whole problem. And it sucks. <laughs> I won't lie, it, it, it kind of sucks. 
but it's okay. I'll 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 figure it out. Um, I think it's it's basically just gonna be a matter of consistency. Try to get it to like where I can like manage it. Um, really, realistically, I think my body is just currently really used to being up at night, and so like it just naturally wants to be up at night. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Yubi says very relatable. Hi, Yubi. <laughs> Good to see you. But yeah, that is uh, that is basically what we what we've got going on. But yeah, thank y'all for being patient with me on that, though. I do appreciate it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Bolt of says, if I don't take my melatonin, I wake uh, I wake up off and on throughout the night sometimes. Yeah, I do that a lot, too. Uh, my my big... Pr you know what my big problem is that it has been... It's actually been, like, a regular issue for a long time now. Oh, hey, Pingu. It's been a forever since I've seen you in chat. I hope you're doing well. Um... Uh, but yeah, no, the, the, the problem that I, I've always had is if I sleep too, if I try to go to bed early, um, I will wake up stupidly early. Even if I take a melatonin, um, it like, usually my, my like quote unquote bedtime, my like old lady bedtime, um, no, I be, it's basically, um, I usually go to bed anywhere between like 11 and 1 AM, um, it's like kind of the standard for me basically like like on a good on, on a good day i go to bed at like yeah like 11 or so um but so if i try to go to bed at like 8 <laughs> if i if i try to go to bed at like 8 8, 8, 8 p.m um i'll wake up at like midnight <laughs> for like no reason like for no reason i have no idea why it just just how it always goes. It could be like a combination of just like noise outside or like, you know, people in the house or whatever. Um, I don't know. I don't know the exact reason, but yeah, if I try to go to bed any time before 11, it's it, it's done. I'll wake, I'll wake up in the middle of the night um, and then I'll, you know, I'll be like, well, shit, now I can't, I can't go back to sleep now. Um, Cause I get all, I get all worked up when I wake up in the middle of the night. I get all like flustered. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a problem. Sleep is hard. Sleep is hard. Why is it gotta be so difficult? I just want to sleep when I need to sleep and be awake when I need to be awake. You think it'd be that easy, you know? Yeah, very good, very good. And yeah, no worries, Pingu. I totally get it. I totally get it. It was nice to see you. I was just thinking about you uh, the other day. So yeah, <laughs> it's good to see you. It's good to see you. Uh, ooh, we got some folks answering today's question of the day. Ooh, yeah, it's a tasty, it's a very tasty question of the day today. Probably would have been more appropriate for a uh, Scarlet and Violet stream, but I digress. Today's uh, question of the day is, what is your favorite kind of sandwich? Please do share. Please do share. Um, let's see. Uh, Arcanine says a chicken egg sandwich is something that uh, they sell at most shops here in Iceland, and they're so good. I've never had chicken and egg together. That's interesting. Um... Yeah, that sounds good. It sounds really good. Like, is it like, um, is it like fried eggs or, or like scrambled? Like, what, 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 what kind of eggs are on it? Like, is it just like a over easy egg? They just slap on like a piece, uh, like a piece of chicken or something. Ooh, no, you can't evolve, my friend. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so it's just egg, <laughs> egg sandwich. I mean, e eggs can be really good on sandwich. I've had eggs on a couple of pretty decent sandwiches before. I think it says Subway. Do they have Subway there? Oh, cool. Um, I mean, Subway sandwiches can be good. I'm a big fan of the steak and cheese at Subway, and I'm a big fan of the meatball marinara um, at, at Subway. It, it, as long as I don't have like acid reflux at the moment, because yeah, if you, if you don't have don't have the meatball sub when you have acid reflux. I've got bad bad memories with that that scenario. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, good good choices, good choices for sure. Um, Thoreau says, uh, breakfast sandwiches are top tier, um, uh, tied with, uh, sub sandwiches. Yeah, subs are, subs can be good, especially if they're, I mean, Subway's good and all, but, like, uh, you have, like, like a, like a proper, like, good sub, um, very, very scrumptious. Very, very scrumptious. Um, okay, um, yeah, Symbol, you just chill. Uh, we'll keep, keep on going with pain. God, I love these, uh, construction worker ladies, they're so cute. <laughs> Uh, Star says, my sleep pattern is the where I'll lie, uh, lie down and try to sleep and finally uh, fall asleep anywhere between one to three hours later. I know, I hate that. I get that a lot too. My big problem is if I'm working on a, uh, if I'm working on a project and I'm constantly working on a project, mind you, <laughs> if I'm working on a project right before I go to bed, um, it's a problem because uh, I'll like think about my project like all night uh, and it's tough. Hey, Jackie, welcome in. 
Welcome in, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Um, so yeah, I'll like, I'll like, like hyper fixate on, on like what I was doing before I went to bed and then just not be able to sleep. So thank you for the sub with Prime. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> Share this to get the alert off my thing. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. And we got to hear the auto no noise. So that's fun. Jackie says this question of the day was made for me. I love sandwiches. Um... So I order the same sandwich uh, from the work del from the work deli every single day. Ham, provolone, red onions, mayo, salt, and pepper, uh, all on. Oh, <laughs> shiabata, kiabata, sayabata. I don't know what that is. I assume some sort of bread. <laughs> but yes, very good, Jackie. Um, I mean, yeah, sounds good. I'm not a big fan of onions, but the rest is all sounds quite scrumptious. Uh, ciabatta. Okay, got it. It's a roll. Oh, okay. Is it like... Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to try that sometime. What is it like? Is it like... It's like... Sweet? Or like... Is it like really like... Starchy? Or like... Yeah, like... I don't know. Give me... Give me the... Give me the load. I've never even heard of it. <laughs> Obviously. Um, okay. Drill bear's coming out. We'll fight it with Monkey. Uh, Elk says, the hardest thing about sleep schedule for me is that sometimes when I'm really passionate about a project, I uh, I can uh, uh, best focus on it at 11. Oh, I'm the same way, Elk. Yeah, no, like, I, I get my best work done on projects, like, yeah, in the in the, in the the evening hours. It's it's rough. It's rough because I'll get, like, super into it, and it's just like, I I can't put it down sometimes. It's just like, I did, I did, I literally did this last night. Um, I was working on my Steam Deck. Um, I've been working on, like, you know, optimizing it for, uh, emulation and, you know, just basically, like, uh, I, what, my, my goal was to, like, get it set up for, like, uh, drop-in, drop-out multiplayer, um, so that, you know, folks can just, like, oh, and, like, hey, I have a friend over, and do you want to play, like, you know, I don't know, Super Smash Brothers Melee or Mario Kart 64 or, like, whatever other multiplayer game, um, and, like, the idea would be that just, like, in, like, a matter of seconds, I could just have it up on the Steam Deck on my TV. Um, so I was, yeah, I was, like, really, really, really um, focused on getting that, like, set up and, like, you know, optimized for, you know, controls and all that stuff. So it was really, really seamless. Um, and, yeah, so it, point is, <laughs> point is, I was very, very, very fixated on it last night. And, yeah, I was, like... All right, I'm going to go to bed right after I finish this part of the project. And then I was like, oh, but technically I need to get this done too. And then this done, and then this done, and then this done, and then this done. And then, <laughs> and then by, by, by the time I actually finally went to bed, it was like, you know, two hours after I'd said that I was about to go to bed. <laughs> so, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. All right. Yeah, but uh, Blazy says uh, raw onions are hit or miss. I'm just onions. I don't seek after. I like if they're on something, uh, and they're like mostly tasteless. I'll eat them if they're like there. But I'm not. I'm not huge on them. Uh, screech. Yeah, I'll, t I'll actually take screech just in case. Uh, that could actually be potentially useful in certain scenarios. Uh, let's see. Shibata is a really fluffy bread, and the outside has a nice flowery texture to it. Oh, okay. Interesting. Is it like a dinner roll? Like, if you had to compare it to a dinner roll, I love dinner roll. I mean, if y'all have those sweet, like, Hawaiian sweet bread dinner rolls, oh my god, they're fucking amazing. I could eat, like, an entire bag of them. <laughs> it's definitely not good, but, um, I absolutely would if you gave me the opportunity. No, Grookey, I'm sorry. As Star says for question day, says I ordered my meatball marinara with Italian herbs and cheese bread. Ooh, very good. Provolone, olives. Not a big fan of olives, but fair enough. Every yeah, and then mozzarella. Yeah, everything else there, I'm down. You lost me at olives, but that's okay. Despite my Olive Garden obsession, I don't like olives. <laughs> uh, yeah, not not a big fan of that. Very good, very good. Yeah, we moved right through the the mine though. That's pretty cool. Are we good and ready for bade? Um, I think so. I think Pain could probably fight him. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Uh, also, Shmelody, hello, welcome in. I think I saw you, and then I totally was just, like, got lost in what I was saying uh, before I could say hello. So, hello, Shmelody, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well. 
Uh, since I'm not a big uh, sandwich girly, to be honest, maybe I'll cheat and say burgers for questions today. Hey, you know what? Like, technically, a burger is a sandwich. And also, technically, a hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> technically, it is. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess both of those would be valid. It would be valid. Yeah, it's very good. Starts as I love Hawaiian sweet roll. I know, they're so good. They're so good. I would absolutely eat a whole bag of them. They're just really, really tasty. Uh, Jackie says, yeah, it's like, it's like a dinner roll with a slightly harder outer shell. Okay, I see. Um, okay, I, I I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. Maybe I'll try it. Do they do... They do um, obviously, like, I don't know if this is necessarily comparable to what you've got at your, like, uh, work deli. But um, if do they do they do ciabatta bread at like Subway or whatever? Maybe I'll try it like next time, just out of curiosity, because everyone seems to be picking it up. The, the new the the new in thing is all the ciabatta bread with the with the kids. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just being an old lady. <laughs> okay, bid. Let's go. Yeah, are gonna. Uh, his name is pronounced Bade. Um, they say it in his song, in in his in his theme song. Hold on, hold on. We'll see if we can listen out for it. Did I already miss it? I didn't miss it, right? No, I guess we did. I guess we did miss it. I talked right over it. <laughs> if it loops back around while we're fighting him, I'll point it out. <laughs> it's it's that it's like the little build up part where it's just B -b 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 You can hear it in the background. It's nice. <laughs> Anyways. Atena, I don't think we're gonna hear it again, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, get him. Wait, wait, actually, maybe. Hold on. Nope, we're still on the breakdown. Damn it! <laughs> I was like, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, that was it. That was it. Okay, we actually got it. Nice. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was gonna do it yet. But yeah, that right, that that spot right there. That is that is like a, a little like computerized voice saying his name, with like a little stutter, I guess. Um, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Anyways, uh, finish it off, Hatena, or uh, finish off the Hatena paid. There we go. Uh, Shmeli says, "Are two slices of pizza on uh, on top of each other a sandwich? If you put something between them, yes." Um, if you just put two two pieces of pizza on on top of each other, that is not. I would argue that that is not technically. Well, I guess maybe if it has like condiments. If you put a if you put a pizza on top of a pizza and the one of the and the pizza on the bottom has like pepperonis and like cheese on it, um, yeah, I guess it would be a sandwich. Kind of wild. <laughs> kind of wild. Here, I'm just gonna super potion real fast. Uh, Multiplayer says, "Relax, Liz. You aren't old. You're the uh, you're only like what seven years old to me. You aren't, aren't aren't that old. I feel uh, I feel old. Depends on on which age you're talking about in reference to me. I'm 28, IRL, but everyone knows me as being 19 because I say that a lot. <laughs> and I've tr I've accidentally tricked a few people into thinking I'm actually 19 a, a couple times. So if you're assuming assuming that your 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 seven years difference is to suggest that you are um, I guess what would that be?" Uh, tw 21 as opposed to as opposed to uh, 12 <laughs> um, then yeah that's this is, this is a stark difference <laughs> um, but yeah okay okay got it you're 21 got it got it okay sweet so based on my actual age not the one that I present myself as <laughs> take it easy pink thanks for popping in it was lovely to see you we'll see you next time next time you're next time you're available <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, the, the, I'll question know how the fighting gym leader's name is pronounced. It's pronounced B. Uh, that is, uh, it's B as in, like, a bug. Um, they, they, uh, that's an actual name, incidentally. There's, a, there's a community member, uh, who pops in from time to time who, who has the same name. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, it is pronounced B. Yes, echoey obeyed. Exactly. Yeah, I've I've heard I've heard some some people say Bay. Um, see, that's that's one of those scenarios where it's like I know it's not a super common name, but it is like a name name. <laughs> so like I it like it's what on like a Pokemon name for example, where it's like oh it could kind of be anything you want it to be, even though I still kind of starkly disagree with that notion, <laughs> much to the chagrin of many. Um, 
it's not like a fictional name where it's like you have some degree of leeway. It's like if you, it's a real person's name, you should probably just use the actual pronunciation of it. If you learn, like if you ever learn it, if you don't know, it's like, okay, you don't know. But like, once you know, you should probably use the right one. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, I was going to say, I don't want to get into a whole Ferrothorn, Ferrothorn uh, debacle, Jackie. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, let's go. Oh, I'm sorry, Arkana. I did miss the, the the change layout color. I did see it, and then yeah, I'm I'm just whooshing it. My my apologies. Uh, let's get that going real fast. Um, let's see, this this is why I count on y'all to like uh, remind me on that that sort of thing. Uh, okay, we want an orange color. Up that saturation a little bit. That's pretty orange right there. That should do. Um, so yeah, thanks for the redemption there. Uh, I appreciate it. You didn't need to do the highlighted message for that, by the way, um, but <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Saji says, I have to go. I need to get up early tomorrow. See you guys. Love you all. Thank you for coming in, Saji. Always a pleasure. Um, take care. We will see you uh, on the next one. Okay. Um, well, yeah, Galar, Galar, mine number one. Taken care of. Very nice. Um, and yeah, we are, we are, we are moving along here. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of like other character, other Pokemon characters who have like, um, like sort of like debatable, debatable pronunciation to their names. I feel like the vast majority of like Pokemon, like gym leaders and like Elite Four members and stuff, have like actual people names. Like I, I don't think there's a whole lot of them that are like weird, like up for debate, you know, fake names as it were. Uh, most of most of them are actual like humans' names. <laughs> So yeah, let's, 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 I figure let's knock out all the trainers around here. Just get that little baby bit more XP before we take on Milo. He, his ace is at level 20, which I know he only has two Pokemon, so he's prob we're probably fine regardless. But I figure, I figure being, being, um, you know, caught up as best we can is a good idea. Oh, right, right on. Oh, yeah. No, it definitely is, though. It, def it definitely is. If you, if you like, because I've, I've listened to that song like a billion times because it's one of my favorite songs in Sword and Shield. You, if you listen to it real close, like turn it up loud, um, yeah, you can hear it's de It's definitely bad. It's definitely bad. I don't Was he in the anime at any point? I have no idea. I guess, like, spo be spoiler conscientious because I know there's some people who haven't watched, but yeah, I don't Was Bade in the anime? Did they ever say his name out loud? I would wonder about that. Uh, Jackie says, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, the grass gym leader from X and Y um, is an interesting one. Yeah, I'm actually not sure how to pronounce his name. I've I've seen the name written before, not, like, just in Pokemon. I know it's an actual name, but it's, a, it's like, a foreign name, so I don't know. I don't, I actually, yeah, I don't know if it's Ramos or Ramos. Um, it could be either. It could be uh, either, really. Ooh, Water Pulse? Um, yeah, I'll take that. Um, I guess I could just get rid of Confusion, because I already have, I have Eerie Spell, and that's stronger. Um, so yeah, we'll do that. He's not been in the anime yet. Okay, cool. Oh, maybe he was in the one Galar episode? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to check that out at some point, see, see if they ever say it. I mean, it, the, admittedly, the anime can be kind of fucky sometimes, where they, like, make a weird, weird, like, change. Like the, the contradicts like everything else. They've done that before. Sorry, is, is uh, the bug gym leader from X and Y Viola or, or Viola? I think that's one of those those sorts of um, like normal people because that's a, obviously a real name. I think it's I think it's Viola technically, but Viola is like also equally valid because it's it's like a tomato tomato kind of thing. <laughs> um, th with that particular name, in any case. Oh yeah, you literally said the same thing. Nice. Um, okay, give him the thunder shot. Um, but yeah, yep. Interesting case. Interesting case. Yeah, I guess X and Y has, has a f has a few that are that are like that. Um, very interesting. At least we can all agree that Wolfric is pronounced Wolfric. <laughs> uh, sorry, I think it's pronounced Ramos in the anime. By the way, it's been a while since I've, since I've watched it. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, thank you for thank you for sharing the deets with us. I appreciate it. Yeah, I saw your post about that, uh, Arcanine. Um, huge, huge W, huge W. Congratulations. I don't really know a whole lot about that whole situation. I heard there was some sort of controversy with that 
uh, like organization, I guess. I don't know. I don't want to get, obviously get into the details because it sounded like it was pretty, pretty spicy controversy. Pretty spicy controversy, but uh, very cool stuff. You love to see their representation. So yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Uh, Thor says you're all wrong. It's Ramos. Oh God, no, please. <laughs> Okay. Get him with the Dragon Claw. Uh, Shmeldia said, I've heard so many people pr pronounce Sharon as Sharon. I know, yeah, Sharon is like, I feel like that's like a really common mispronunciation. Yeah, it's, it's, that is, that is definitely one that is like, um, has a lot of people talking. It's Sharon, as in Cherry. Sharon, Sharon, pronounce Sharon. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely one that I've heard a lot of people say wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, Ducky. Yep, good stuff. Uh, Blazy said Sharon would be a good name for gender swap, Sharon. Yeah, yeah, or they could, yeah, they could do like um, uh, uh, Fire Emblem Awakening uh, and Fire Emblem Fates have the have the. I love that they have the gender neutral names. Although Robin is like, okay, yeah, Robin definitely gender neutral name. I actually think Corin is a really funny gender neutral name because it's like it, a lot of people would pronounce it Corin, and that's very much a traditionally feminine name. <laughs> but they're just like, no, it's Corin. It's Corin, so it could be anything because it's a made up name. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, we 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 love Corin here. Um, my main in Smash. Fight me in Smash. Fight me in Smash, I'll beat you up with Corrin. Wait, there's people in chat I fought in Smash, right? Thorough, you're here, I think. I fought Thorough in Smash. Good Ryu player. Very good Ryu player. Who else, who else have I fought in, in chat in, in Super Smash Brothers? Let me know. I don't know who else here. <laughs> Hell yeah, we do get out Thorough. Hell yeah. You've been practicing your, your Ryu? You ready for the rematch? Yeah, it's in Aurora and Ryu, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very good stuff. Yeah, we played yeah, we played One Star. I remember that. I remember that. I know, yeah, yeah, uh, voiced Pikachu is so cursed. I'm so glad that they abandoned that in uh in Scarlet and Violet. They still they still play it in Pokemon Home though, which is annoying. I usually play uh I usually use Pokemon Home with sound off though, so it's usually not that big of a deal, but um yeah, it's uh it was a weird decision on their part. They do it with Eevee too, which is yeah, kind of cringe. Although for what it's worth, credit credit where it's due, Eevee has different names in different languages, um, and the voice actress for Eevee voiced all of them. <laughs> like so, like there's like a ton more voice lines for Eevee than there is for Pikachu, which is quite funny. With the rest of that, I've been using Lucas lately. Ooh, heck yeah! Uh, Lucas players are fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that endearingly. Um, they're really hard to fight uh, if they're really good. So that's awesome, though. Uh, Sorry, so I've been doing a Nuzlocke and Smash Adventure Spirit Mode. I, you know, I've actually been wanting to revisit Spirit Mode in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I've been, like, waffling about it because it's, like, a huge time investment. But, yeah, I kind of wanted to restart, like, restart Smash and just play that at some point just for fun. Um, cause I, yeah, I remember back when Ultimate was new, that was so much fun. It was so much fun to just run through that. Uh, okay, low tad. Get him with the Dragon Claw. Yeah, very good. Blazy says, favorite character to play in Ultimate is Roy or Rob? 100%. Ooh, we got a Rob player? Hell yeah, Rob's one of my pocket mains. Very nice, very nice. All right, very good. Texas Ocean, I'm playing wide during stream, and I never knew about the missable overworld encounter animation for Eveltal if you run away from its encounter. Oh, really? Oh, have we, do we, do we know about that? I feel like that sounds like vaguely familiar, like like I, I learned about it from chat on stream. And, but now I can't place it because I have just no brain cells sometimes. I have, I have no memories. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's over here? 
yeah. Uh, Roy, Roy and Rob, very good. Uh, Blazy. Um, I, 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 like I said, I pocket uh, Rob. Roy's pretty good. I played him a little bit in melee, but it's been years, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of doo doo. I'm doo doo with all the Fire Emblem characters except for Corrin these days. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm being real, I played a little bit of Crom. I tried to get into Crom when, uh, when Ultimate came out, but his recovery is so bad. <laughs> Ooh, very good, Jackie. Thanks for sharing. I w Sephiroth is a character I want to play, Blazy. Um, Sephiroth is a character I like. I want to play them so badly because I think their move set is really cool. Um, like, what, like their whole, the whole, the whole like concept of just like hitting really fucking hard, but like, yeah, like having, of course, like the you know certain limitations. Um, I don't know. It, it like I really like the way that that character is set up. The problem is that I'm absolute garbage doo-doo at back airs. Uh, that's like my weakness in Smash is like consistent, consistent, uh, and consistent back airs that can actually connect. Um, sorry, I, I don't know why this became like a Smash stream, but <laughs> here we are. Um, and Sephiroth, that's like Sephiroth's like main bread and butter is like being able to land those like consistent, consistent, like super fucking powerful back airs. And slow back airs i just can't seem to master i don't know what what it is the 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 only the only back air i've been able to like consistently land these days is corin and that's because she's my main um so yeah it's it's pretty rough i won't lie <laughs> i need to get better at them i need to get better frankly if i just practice i'd probably do well enough but i only ever play like the same like five characters so <laughs> it is what it is I know, yeah, Shmelody, Shmelody points out. You know, Corrin, Corrin is, the, is very much the exception, Shmelody. Very much the exception. And the reason that the reason that I can more consistently land the, the, the Corrin back airs is because I'm very used to the, um, I'm very used to the, 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 the move box, like the little wind box on it. Um, so I actually use it for, for recovery reasons more often than I use it to actually land the, uh, land a, a solid back air but i can i do know how to like you know i know the spacing for it to like actually consistently land a back air when i need it so which is really cool it's one of my favorite kill moves um especially lately um but yeah <laughs> that is very much a a um ver very much a a core and specific thing um although i have been kind of popping off a little bit with my rob my rob i have been landing back air relatively consistently lately with Rob, although it's still far from Rob's, like, main utility, so, <laughs> you know, very niche scenarios, but it's cool when it lands. Yep, very good stuff. Keep up the pain, pain. Let's up the earthquake. I yeah, wish we could get like a freaking ability capsule for our for our fossily friend here, cause ha hustle sucks. Like it sucks not having consistent earthquake. I won't lie. Okay, we got the Grubbin. Um, I think we can bring someone else out now. Grubbin. Um, let's fight it with. How about Clunk? Am I going to hunt Mil uh, Milsery here? I don't think so. I don't think we need it. I wrote down basically everything important that we need to grab in this playthrough, and uh, I yeah we don't have really anything important to grab until we get to Glimwood Tangle. So we're probably uh, well there is like a couple of wild area things that we could go get, but I'm probably gonna save them for later. Um, yeah, the main thing is I need to get a hold of a Corsola, um, a, a Galarian Corsola uh, in uh, in the wild area, um, and then the other like really important one that I want to grab if I can um, is Ponyta. A Galarian Ponyta, because uh, there's a lot of the Galar mods that are just weirdly not in any other game than Sword and Shield. Like they just haven't come back, um, which is yeah, kind of kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird. So yeah, Galarian Ponyta, Galarian Rapidash, um, Galarian Farfetched and Surfetched, um, freaking um, Corsola and Cursula. They're all only in Sword and Shield. So like I, and they're also like rare and a couple of them overlap with like uh with like uh availability um between sword and shield so yeah it's tricky it's real tricky i do need a milsery hold up let me let me look at my list here do i actually oops sorry sorry it's lagging out i'm sorry it does that when i load chrome 
I don't write. That's weird. I must have not ri written it down for some reason. If uh, if if, if that's true, because yeah, I'd, I'd be down to find one here. They're not that rare, right? Yeah, sure enough, I do not have a milsery. Okay, well, that's weird that I didn't write it down. <laughs> um, okay, but yeah, fair enough. Good, good catch. Good catch. Yeah, I, I do in fact need one, Arcanine. Okay, beautiful. Um, yeah, I believe they show up, um, I believe they show up as, like, a hidden encounter here, um, in the grass, like a random encounter in the grass. Yeah, I'm probably gonna use the, like, weather exploit to get the weather I need voices so I can get Cursula, because, yeah, I'm not trying to mess around with, like, being in the right, being on the, in the right weather, like, randomly. Yeah, I, I do have to verify though. As I, if I'm gonna like actually hunt for a Pokemon here, I need to verify that I don't need. Oh shit! I need a Joltik. Did I already bump into a wild Joltik though? Oh, now I'm kind of like debating if I've I've technically invalidated my encounter. Did I run into any wild Pokemon chat? I don't think I did. Did I? Maybe I did. Ah, oh, see, this is why I should pay more attention. See, I wasn't really paying attention to it because I was like, oh, I, I'm not catching anything, anyways. But now, now I'm second guessing it. I don't think I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Y'all go watch the VOD back and let me know later. I guess this Joltik is technically our encounter though. I'm gonna I'm just gonna run from it. I Well I don't know, should I catch it? I like I my instinct has me like wanting to wait. Um and like catch it like Gen 5 or 6 or something. Like catching it somewhere where, where like I have a more limited pool. But at the same time, like, I'm not sh really sure on Pokemon in Gen 5, 6, or 7, so, I don't know, maybe maybe I could just, maybe I could just catch it and, like, get it over with. Either way, this is, de it definitely whooshes our our, mil our potential mil Milsery, which I think we can get Milsery in the post game, because um, I think it's, like, it spawns in the, in the wild area when there's fog, which fog unlocks during the post game. So, we can still get a Milsery this playthrough, theoretically. Um... Yeah. Oh, so you can catch and then maybe release someone sees you encountered one before on the VOD. Okay, cool. Um. All right, I'll catch a Jill tip. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Why not? You can actually get uh, military right now if you spam wishing stars in the wild area. Oh, like like in the max raid dens, you mean? There's a specific den that has a has a common encounter. Ooh, I, which one? I would be curious about that. You'll have to let me know, Jackie. Um, okay. Well, I guess I guess I'll catch this Joltik. That's fine. Um, do you live Dragon Claw? Whoop. Well, we're not catching it. <laughs> it does not live Dragon Claw. Can confirm. No Joltik for us. <laughs> well, whatever. That settles that. <laughs> I will be. I, I'm still curious, though. If you're if you're a VOD watcher, or you or any of you go any any of you who are here live, go back to watch the VOD. You'll have to let me know if that would have been a valid encounter or not. <laughs> okay, I think there's one more trainer we can go fight. Oh my god, an Eevee! That's a rare rare encounter. That's like a like five percent or something like that. Ooh, and speaking of Eevee, we're going to fight the um, going to fight the Eevee child. Also, can I just point out something that's really fucking obnoxious? Is that Eevee still here? Oh shit, I think it's gone. Can I? Can we just talk about how Eevee's color palette is still fucking washed out in this game from being from X and Y? But then they they have this brand new model for this like Eevee trainer over here. Also, I didn't mean to activate the thing. Um, they have this brand new model for, um, for the Eevee trainer, and the colors are actually saturated properly. So it's like, the trainer, the trainer's, like, Eevee costume looks infinitely better than the fucking washed out actual Eevee. <laughs> it bothers me immensely. Because, like, it's, it's like, like, they, they, they realized, oh shit, you know, Eevee's supposed to be fucking brown, not, like, off gray. <laughs> 
but I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. I guess I shouldn't complain that much, but it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, it bothers me. I hate I hate the desaturated Pokemon colors. It drives me insane. Yes, indeed. Hello, Milo. Ooh, Milcery is in Raid Den 34. That really sums it up for me, Jackie. Also funny 34 number. <laughs> very nice, very nice. But I would I would appreciate like knowing like where that actually is though. If 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 it's if it's like a like findable findable uh like thing. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that both Bulbapedia and um Bulbapedia and Cerebi don't necessarily handle the like modern Pokemon games like location like stuff very well. I get that it's a lot more complicated than it used to be. Like it used to just be like, oh, it's Route One, it's here at ten percent or whatever. <laughs> um, and it's not like that anymore. So it's like kind of tricky. But like, I don't like the way that either Bulbapedia or Cerebi actually handles handles that that sort of thing. Hey, I could have had one of those. That would have been cool. <laughs> yeah, easy, easy, Thero, easy. <laughs> This is technically a fairy type. I should probably swap. Um, let's go into Slow Clean. Oh my god, I had a little panic attack this morning when I uh, when I went to go make my coffee. There was a fucking spider on my counter. On my counter! On my kitchen counter! Next to my coffee pot! Next to my coffee cup! And it scared the shit out of me. It was horrible. Not a big fan of it. <laughs> I was not a big fan at all. Um, I did not. I I was not able to get it. Um, I ran away and screamed. Um, and then I I made I made someone else spray it. Spray it with the with the raid. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry, sorry if you're there. You mean close your ears? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I had someone else take care of it. <laughs> I, uh, I do not handle spiders very well. Okay, very good. That was the final trainer, I believe. Turf field, here we come. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, we're looking pretty pretty good here. Slow Queen got to level 19, excellent. So yeah, we're still on pain, very good. Uh, Jackson gave a better description over the games. Oh, okay, cool, I'll, I'll, I'll take a peek real fast. What are we, what are we cooking with here? Thank you for doing that for me, Jackie. Okay, all right, I got a picture of it. Okay, so I, I think I know where that's at. It's like over by Bridge, Bridge, Bridge Field. It's in the corner straight across from the daycare in Bridge Field. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I'll keep that in mind. Maybe I can, uh, maybe in between streams, like maybe we could start a stream by jumping in on that and, and like I can like uh, cycle through to try and find it hopefully and start a stream with it. Maybe, well, I'll, I'll look into it. If, if I can even fi find the right one, of course. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, that's why I squashed the jolt. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually funny. Um, I, I think I mentioned before, I, I do not do well with most animals. I'm, I'm actually scared of the vast majority of animals, except for like mammals, basically. Um, but when they're Pokemonified, I love them. Like I love Galvantula and, uh, and, and Joltek. They're great. They're fantastic Pokemon. But <laughs> the minute I see their actual counterpart, you'll, you'll, you'll catch me checking out. <laughs> Oh, shut up, SBS. That shit gives me anxiety, man. Like, and like, I think the other thing too is that it was in my kitchen, where my food is. That's like my comfort zone. It's like it, I'm supposed to be able to go in the kitchen to like, you know, feel nice, not like feel paranoid and freaked out. It's a, it's bad news, bears. Um, okay, we gotta go meet up with Sonia. Oh, I see. It's missable. Oh, when do we get? Okay, so it's a one-star encounter that's potentially missable. Oh, that's that's interesting. Can I even? Hmm. I'm trying to think. Will it even let me across the bridge to to go to the bridge field area? I don't know if it will. Maybe it, maybe it will. I don't remember how much freedom it gives you in the wild area. Maybe maybe it does let me walk up there right now. I don't know. Like I said, there, it, it also shows up in in the in the wild, and I can always also catch one in in Scarlet and Violet as well. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm really not that concerned with it to be honest. We'll just keep it in mind for the future if we happen to bump into one. If we happen to bump into one, I will catch it potentially. 
They do let you go anywhere, but they're a high-level roaming Pokemon that you have to dodge. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Oh, yeah, no, not not a huge fan of that star. See, that's the thing, is, like, they, they animated Araquanid in Indigo Disc to be very spidery. That's, uh, that's the thing, is it loses some of that Pokemonification, where it's, like, it's not freaky because it's a Pokemon. Uh, because, you know, it has, like, a really, really, you know, stark, cartoonish design or whatever, so it's, like, no, no big deal. But, no, the fact that they actually made Araquanid walk like an actual spider is really fucking freaky. I hate that, like, thing they do where they, like, move all they like move their legs all like independently and shit i mean like obviously but like you know what i mean like you know what i'm talking about where it's like they don't move their legs like you know one after the other it's always like one and then five and then six and then nine and then nine and then eight and then you know you know what i mean like it's it, it's just like their legs are like inconsistent patterns it freaks me out <laughs> yeah and anyway, i don't want to talk about spiders they're freaking me i'm getting anxiety we need to stop we need to talk about something else <laughs> Alright, so what animal do you draw the line between cute and creepy? I don't think there's any Pokemon. I don't know if you're talking about Pokemon, but um, I don't think there's any Pokemon that are like that for me. Uh, for actual animals, like, frankly, if, if if I like the animal, I just like it. If I don't like the animal, I am probably scared of it. <laughs> hey, Duke, good to see Oh, it's been a little while, Duke. Good to see you. Good to see you. I hope you've been doing well. Um... Yes, we were talking about spiders. I would really rather not, but, <laughs> but currently we are, yes. Oh no, crab I hate crabs. We've 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 had this conversation before. I don't like I don't like crabs. I don't like crabs. Why do they walk that way? Well, they, they that's a, the crime against nature to walk sideways like that. I'm not a fan. Not a fan. Sorry, crab fans. <laughs> Okay, so let's head on over to the gym. Take a look at this, lids. I forgot what we were about voices in this game. <laughs> the grass gym badge. I got got it on. Uh, I got it on one try. There we go. Nailed it. But I live in fear of birds too. Yeah, I, yeah more annoyance. I I, I am kind of scared of like big birds. So like like uh, I would. I'm scared of like ostriches, um, and like road runners and emus and uh but no like smaller birds mostly are just annoying uh, i don't like them i don't like that like ducks are really annoying uh, there, there's this there, uh there's a grocery store kind of near me where there was a bunch of um there was like a gang of ducks that lived like nearby and every time i would go to that grocery store they'd swarm my car it was really fucking obnoxious <laughs> hi ball guy I will take a ball. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Arcanina Roadrunner is an actual bird. It's not just a. It's not just the from Wily e. Coyote. Incidentally, coyotes are real too. <laughs> yeah, there's coyotes and Roadrunners. Those are actual things. <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's let's jump right in. Oh, Dapper Kirby, welcome in. Dapper Kirby says, "Scared of big birds? Sesame Street must be killer." <laughs> I'm scared of. The, I am pretty scared of that big bird. <laughs> if, I, if I imagine like photorealistic big bird, like an actual bird that was that big and had those proportions, that'd be horrifying. <laughs> uh, Star says, "Yeah, I used to see Roadrunners at my grandma's house. Heck yeah, heck yeah, yeah. I'm not not a fan. I, I don't know. They're like dinosaurs, right? They're basically dinosaurs. That's kind of scary." That's kind of scary. Shmeli says, I get so nervous when birds fly in front of in front of me while driving, even though I've never uh, come close to hitting one. I know. They do that sometimes, though. And it, yeah, I can see why it, it freaks you out, because it freaks me out, too. I'm not a fan. I am not a fan of, of, of birds just in, in general existing near me. I'm fine with them existing in general, but just not near me. Yeah, pretty much, SPS. Not a huge fan. Not a huge fan. But it's okay. <laughs> now, obviously, I play it up for a, play it up a little bit more than, than is, like, true reality. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, I like dogs. I like cats. I like pigs a lot. Um, I like cows. I like... Um, I don't know. 
Uh, I like other things too, I think, but I couldn't tell you what they are off the top of my head. <laughs> but those are definitely like one well, of my favorite. I like horses. Horses are nice. Even though horses, horses can be scary, they have the potential to be scary in specific scenarios. But um, it depends. Ooh, I don't know how that Wulu actually got through there. Um, but yeah, horses, horses are horses are are nice. Charlie says I like mice, uh, but can't stand hamsters. You don't like hamsters? That's interesting. I like hamsters. I had a hamster when I was little. His name was Chewy. <laughs> um, he was like my first. He was like my f my first like uh like pet that I can remember. Apparently, I had a frog at some point. I don't remember it at all. And I don't like frogs, so I don't know how well that went. But I was too—I'm too young to remember having a frog. But apparently, I did. Okay, gossip floor. Have I ever ridden a horse? I have ridden a horse. Yes. Um, not often, mind you. But I have—I I, um, there was a when I lived when I lived in Texas, there was a ranch nearby that had like a program that it did with the local daycare I went to. Um. And basically, every, every like it was like every few months they would come by and um, uh, like basically like there was this like fenced off area where they just like bring in their horses and you could. Um, well, I actually want to go over and fight this trainer just for the XP. Uh, yeah, yeah, they they bring their horses in and let the kids ride them. Um, you know, obviously like in, in in limited capacity and all that stuff. It wasn't like every kid, but <laughs> if you signed up in advance, you could like go and do that. Um, so yeah, I did that a couple of times. It was really fun. Um, you, you know, not like I, it's not like I rode it around like a giant pasture or anything, but you know, it was it was a novel thing for a kid to do. Are you thinking of guinea pig? Uh, that's still that's still interesting to me, Shvel. Yeah, like, I love hamsters, guinea pigs, like things of that nature are all nice. <laughs> They're all quite nice. Um, so I don't know. That's surprising, but yeah, I mean, there's plenty of animals that I think that I'm kind of scared of that. Uh, that uh that you know <laughs> people enjoy so <laughs> i can't i can't give you too much too much flack the star says i apparently rode a horse when i was a baby i was crying the whole time oh no <laughs> oh that's sweet though <laughs> now contrary to what people asked me um when i first moved to the north from texas uh, no, I did not ride a horse to school. That was le a legit question that people asked me, and it, and and it, if it was like okay, this was a this was like an isolated incident. This was like a one time deal. No, I had multiple people, multiple people ask me if I rode. I had multiple people ask me if I rode a horse to school. I had multiple people ask me if I lived in a desert. I had multiple people ask me <laughs> if I'd ever been to a saloon. I'm just like, come on, man. I lived I lived near Dallas. Which is a big city in Texas, for those who don't know. It's like a big, bustling city. I lived near there. I did not engage with the the, the, the Wild West <laughs> in my daily life. <laughs> uh, silly. All right, very good. Dabber Kirby says, well, surely you at least wore your boots with spurs to flex on the schoolmates. <laughs> You know, I can't say that I did. I can't say that I did, but, you know. <laughs> no, what the fuck, Wulu? Come back. Yeah. That was some bullshit. All right, there we go. I tell them about tumbleweed races. Oh, my God, you guys. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Good, good stuff. All right, let's play that Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time, Zelda's Garden. We have a master here. All right, there we go. Oh, that was another thing. Uh, on the on the topic of me getting my Steam Deck set up uh, last night, um, and like you know tinkering with it and making it optimized and stuff. Um, I was really excited. I actually got. I in addition to getting my controllers to work consistently, like with correct button layouts, um, on like most most games. Um, I actually got, so I have that, like, uh, Nintendo Switch Online, um, I have a Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller, um, and, uh, 
I got it set up with my Steam Deck so that it actually I could play N64 games on my Steam Deck with uh with with a freaking N64 controller. It's wild. It's like actually wild. <laughs> it was kind of tricky to get it set up, but yeah, it was really neat. <laughs> Uh, Bethel is here. Bethel T says, I cast your, your stream on TV and it feels like you've, uh, you've achieved, achieved omnipotence. Ooh, I am a godly figure on your screen. Very good. I guess I'm not like actually visually on your screen, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, very good. Very good. Also, welcome in. Shimali says, wait, you, so your hat wasn't even 10 gallons? You know, it wasn't. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fake Texan. Fake Texan over here. <laughs> Yeah, no. I was I was I was pretty jazzed that I got that controller that worked though. It's really cool. I got, I got to play Ocarina of Time with an N64 controller on my Steam Deck. It's kinda wild. SPS is a godly figure that cowers before common house spiders. Wow, awesome. It was a big one, SPS. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, it was big, it was scary. Did I wear the Doug Dimmodome hat? Oh my gosh, uh, if only. You know, honestly, not even a big fan of cowboy hats, but I would wear a Doug Dimmodome hat. It goes for miles. <laughs> All right, very good. I always forget how cute these gym trainers are too. I love the I love the little guy. This, this girl's cute too, but the, the 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 guy that we just fought with the glasses. I think that in, that trainer NPC is really fucking cute. Okay, there we go. The final Wooloos. Alrighty, yeah. The gym match awaits us. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna use Slow Queen. I think Slow Queen will be the the solid, obviously type advantage pick here. So let's -a go. Oh, Star says off uh, off topic, but I've been really enjoying Cyber Sleuth. Really different lore from Digimon than uh, I expected. Yeah, the cool thing about the Digimon games is that they all kind of have independent lore. Um, I with I, I think the exception of Digimon World and Digimon. Oh fuck, what's that PSP game called? The uh, there's a couple of them that are basically like retellings of the anime. Um, which Digimon World is one of them, and uh. What the fuck is it called? I, I used to know it. I remember um, I read a lot about it because it was a game that never came out in the West. And I really wanted it to. I can't remember what it's called, though. There, there's a PSP one that uh, I think also got a 3DS port later that never came here that, that I really wanted to come out. But I can't remember the name of it. Anyways, um, most Digimon games have, like, their own independent lore, which is kind of, yeah, it's fun. It's, like, recognizable characters, but, like, you know, um, you know. Brand new lore every single time, which is cool. I've actually been playing a Digimon game as well, Star. Um, I have been replaying Digimon World DS, which I cannot, I cannot uh, overstate it. Digimon World DS. You, if you, if y'all want to play a good fucking Digimon game, like a good ass Digimon game, Digimon World DS is my favorite one, my absolute favorite one. Um, if you play Digimon World Dawn or Dusk, it like runs on the same engine, so it's like the same kind of like standard gameplay. Um, but DS came out first, and I fucking love it. I love it so much. Um, I've been really, really enjoying replaying it, so I recommend it. Look into it. Uh, you'd probably really like it, Star. I think you would. It has the same, um, a very similar gameplay to Cyber Sleuth as far as the battles go. Um, but it's more of a stand. It's more of a. Um, I don't know how to phrase it. It's more of a standard RPG than like a Persona like RPG, I, I guess is a, a way to phrase it. Because <laughs> Cyber Sleuth has a lot of like Persona esque elements to its like overworld. Um, yeah, D DS, is, uh, DS is more like a, a typical like JRPG. Or like, I guess I should say like, like just RPG, I suppose. It's more, it's more in line with like a, like I'd say like a, like a Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy as far as its overworld goes. <laughs> Um, anyways, sorry, distracted. <laughs> Milo, let's go. The DS stands for Data Squad. You know, it is a happy coincidence because the Digimon World DS was kind of like low key used to advertise for Data Squad. But it's funny because in Japan it's called Digimon Savers, so um, it's it just sort of a happy coincidence <laughs> uh, that, that the DS can stand for Data Squad. It's fun.
Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, Dawn and Dusk use the same battle system. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. They're, Dawn and Dusk are effectively just, like, uh, kind of um, cleaned up sequels, more or less, to DS. Um, oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, Digimon Sabers becomes DS as well. Wow. A world of conveniences. <laughs> that works out very nicely. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Um, yeah, Digimon itself as the D. That's fun. <laughs> All right, get him with the max ooze. Oh, I, I didn't know there was an overlapping character between Dawn and Dusk and Cyber. I didn't. I didn't finish Cyber Sleuth. I only got like to the first boss in Cyber Sleuth before I put it down. Um, the <laughs> I always feel bad. God, I forgot how loud Dynamax is. Jesus. Um, I always feel bad. I I can't play games that have Japanese voice acting in them very well. I get like really, really like, I str it's, it's funny cause like, I know I could just turn it off, but it like feels weird to not have voices if they're there. But if they're, if they're speaking Japanese, it like, I don't know, it makes it weird for me to like interpret the tone of the characters super well. Cause I get like confused about like how I'm supposed to feel. I don't know. It's really hard for me to put into words, uh, that sort of thing. But yeah, point is, I kind of put Cyber Sleuth down because I was like struggle bussing, like to get past that, but I should probably just get over myself and, and go back to it. I ha I, I did get, uh, I got it on sale, I think. I got Digimon, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth, like the double pack. It comes with the second, second one as well. I got that on Switch. I originally played it on PS4, but I got it on Switch, so I, I should probably like put that in and actually play it at some point. Maybe I will after I finish DS again. I'm having too much fun with DS to put it put it down right now. <laughs> I've also got the double on switch. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> Stark says you heard it here first. Digimon has the D. It truly does. It truly does have the D. It's the good stuff. All right, get him. Finish it off, slow clean. Oh, the animations on uh, on Galarian slow king are actually kind of nice. This is technically my first time ever using this Pokemon. I have used Galarian Slowbro many times, though. Definitely my favorite Galarmon. Definitely my favorite Galarmon. Yay! There we go. Milo goes down. Not too shabby. We're living knockoff. Uh, yeah, you can have that symbol. Um, how about we get rid of Scratch? Dapper Kirby says, I kind of get it. It feels more natural to understand what words are being emphasized versus um, taking brain power, trying to guess. Dubs over subs, basically. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, yeah, I definitely, I'm, I'm a dubs gal. I'm, a, I'm definitely a dubs gal. Um, I know that's cringe for a lot of people, but what can I say? Um, and as I say, it's kind of funny because, like, in I, I think there's an option to just turn off the voice acting. I should probably just do that if it's gonna bother me that much, but I don't know. There's something about knowing that there is voice acting that, like, mentally makes me, like, want to keep it on. But again, if it's Japanese, it's gonna distract me. So it's like, it's a tricky balance because I'm bothered either way. <laughs> Point is, just if you're gonna, if you're gonna put, bring a game with voice acting to the West. Please just do a dub. <laughs> like, please, please just do it. Like, it's it's fine to like keep the Japanese in and help. You can even keep it as the default if, if if that bothers you that badly. But yeah, they should they should um they should dub it. <laughs> they should definitely dub it. I wish that they had. I was really bothered that they didn't. And same with uh, it, it, that was a, a, a huge problem for me. I played Digimon Survive and it has the same problem. It has it has the exact same problem where um. All the voice acting is in Japanese, and yeah, I only played one one full playthrough because it's a multi playthrough kind of game. Uh, I only played one full playthrough of Survive, and I just couldn't go back to it. The, although the the voice acting was far from the only reason I didn't go back to it, um, but it was definitely a contributing factor in any case. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, gym badge number one. Let's go, and I get to put it on the layout. Wahoo! 
And there we are. Gym badge number one. You love to see it. And Dapper Kirby says, I only listen to dubs because I never take L's. Lydia at some point. Yep, yep. You heard it here first. <laughs> Uh, Oak says I didn't finish Survive. I plan to continue it soon. It's it's a little rough, admittedly. It's it's a little it's a little rough. Oak says certainly a very visual novel, a bit much, a uh, bit too much visual novel. See, I like visual novels. The problem is that it commits probably the worst sin that you can as a visual novel by having boring dialogue. <laughs> like I love visual novels. I play them often. <laughs> like I love like Danganronpa. I love Ace Attorney. Um, the list goes on. I, I enjoy visual novels. Um, the problem is that, like, when it's a game that's mostly reading, it, you have to actually have interesting shit to read. And Digimon Survive's problem is that, like, nothing fucking happens ever. It's always just, like, the most baseline shit that, like, no one... It's just, like, I'm not at all interested in what the characters are saying. The, the writing in, in Digimon Survive is really bad, which is really disappointing because I remember when that game was first shown off, like in a, I think it was like a D Nintendo Direct, and it got delayed too, which was lame. Um, I was so excited for that game. I was so fucking excited because it looked like it looked like visual novel, uh, visual novel plus Fire Emblem plus Digimon is what it looked like. But the reality was was basically really shitty writing really shitty visual novel elements mandatory replay mandatory multiple playthroughs excuse me um uh and and yeah like really really like the gameplay for like the actual like uh battles in that game was like it was okay but like the battles were really short and they like really didn't amount to much in the grand scheme of things hilariously like basically the balance between like the battles and the like out of battle like um progression was like really botched um i did not feel i did not feel inclined to like grind my digimon at any point because like everything was so easy it didn't really matter <laughs> um and you could just kind of unga bunga your way through um yeah i was really disappointed with survive i was really really disappointed Yeah, yeah, uh, it, it's one of those kinds of games, SBS, where, where, um, it, it, so basically, your first playthrough will always be, like, a, basically a failed run, if you will, um, I, I, I guess, alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop some minor Digimon Survive spoilers, so if, if that bothers you, um, you know, maybe just be cautious, <laughs> I'm not gonna go into, like, super detail, I'm just gonna, like, kinda, like, explain part of, like, what the game's about, so basically, like, there's some of your like main characters in that game just die. They just straight up die. And I won't go into specifics, but um so okay, hold on. Uh, we're gonna double battle here. Um wanna make sure I don't kill my own Pokemon. I probably just shouldn't earthquake. Um, okay. Uh we'll 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 go ahead and Dragon Claw. Um but yeah, so multiple multiple playthroughs, uh multiple characters die. Um and um Yeah, Razor Leaf is fine. Uh Basically, in order to save them, you have to like meet. You have to make it so that their Digimon meets certain um, criteria. Like they have to get to a certain level or like grind a specific point to a certain point. And the result, the result of their Digimon like being stronger uh, at the point in the story where that character dies uh, will change the outcome. Basically, um, so if you want to, tr like, basically your your objective in survive in the long run would be to do a playthrough where you can get everybody to survive. Hence, Digimon survive. Um, so, but that, but the, the thing is, is like, it's literally impossible to do that on the first playthrough. You will always have those characters die every single time on the first playthrough. There's absolutely nothing you can do to influence that. Um, and that's kind of lame, you know? <laughs> and that's the other thing too, is like, you might only be able to save like one character, um, on a second playthrough. So it's like, it's, you're looking at probably like three full playthroughs of like the exact same story, more or less just to see the like true ending which is kind of lame <laughs> it's kind of lame it's kind of lame um but anyways uh spo spoiler adjacent things are done now so <laughs> we're, we're, we're good um but yeah I, I i was basically long story short i was very disappointed with that game i i was really really looking forward to it on, up up till release and then it came out and i was just woefully woefully disappointed it doesn't have really catchy music, though. 
I'll give it that. That is, uh, and the art style is also quite gorgeous. The, the art, art style, music, presentation was great. Uh, execution of gameplay was not. <laughs> so there. there the f final verdict. Final verdict on Digimon Survive. All right, Clink is down. I see. I've never played any of the Mega Man Battle Network games. Oh, I have been meaning to get into them. Star, Star, Star's been trying to get me to play them for a while. <laughs> yeah, imagine, imagine replaying Pokemon. Imagine replaying Pokemon. I could never, I could never replay Pokemon. They have like no replay. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. Okay, um, actually, is Milcery on this route? I actually, why do I feel like it is? I guess I could search for one. I don't know, someone let me know if they're on this route or not. I'm actually unsure. I got all these stupid exclamation points. Oh, it's only on route four? Okay, I don't know what I'm thinking of then. I don't know. Make sure we're all good here. See, like, and why in the world would they put this stupid new icon on key items? You can't use most key items. <laughs> like, I can't use a single one of these from my from my uh, inventory except for the escape rope. Um, I, technically, I can use the box link. Oh, you can't even you can't even use the box link from your bag. I'm glad it had new on it so that I could know that I have a box link that I can't use from my bag. Very good stuff. I can't use any of this shit. That's so stupid. <laughs> Yeah, I hate that. I hate that mechanic. It's so pointless. It's so stinking pointless. Okay, keep it going. A little damage, but I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I agree, Dapper Kirby. Uh, for some psychological reasons, optional playthroughs feel less bad. Yeah, no. If a game is so good that I want to replay it, that's that's a W. That's a huge W. But uh, yeah, the, the problem is that like, yeah, a game that like in order to get like a satisfying conclusion requires you to play through the entire game multiple times, that's super cringe. Um, and yeah, Digimon Survive is very much that and that's super fucking lame. <laughs> yep, not a fan. Yeah, but Pokemon games, I love. They're all fun. They're all really fun. I replay them constantly, obviously. <laughs> I, I, I do that as my job, but yeah, it's um, it's interesting. It's interesting. I actually also started just uh, as a. I'm still working on my uh, No Mind Left Behind challenge, but I'm I'm taking a little bit of a break for uh, you know a little while because I I grinded at I grinded away at it quite a lot. Um, so I actually, I did some, I'm doing something that I haven't done before. Well, technically I've done it exactly one time before, but hear me out. Um, I actually started a fresh Legends Arceus playthrough, but the, so basically what I'm doing this time, um, what I'm doing this time is I'm actually, I'm trying to like recapture the magic of Legends Arceus because the last couple playthroughs I've done of it on the forever lock and then just to get Pokemon for my challenges and stuff like that. Um, I kind of like rushed through it, but I started I started a, a playthrough where I'm just kind of like actually playing Legends Arceus the way it's like intended to be played, which is to say like complete the Pokedex and like do all the do all the side quests and stuff. And uh, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun revisiting it to be honest, like and like playing it properly. Um, I don't know, it's been it's been really enjoyable so far. I don't, I don't, maybe I'll maybe maybe I'll fall off of it. It is quite a long game, but uh, like when you play it that way, I should say <laughs> it's really short if you don't. Um, but yeah, it's quite it's quite a lengthy experience if you if you play it properly. Um, but um, I don't know if I'll finish it or not. But so far, I've been having a lot of fun with it. I'm gonna heal real fast. Oh yeah, yay! Legends Arceus. I know I probably should be playing games I haven't actually played before, but <laughs> I do have a habit of playing uh, the exact same games over and over again. I frankly, that's just kind of my mo in general with movies, shows, games. Replay the stuff that I love a lot. And, and and then <laughs> and then like put off a lot of like really notable shit that I still haven't consumed um, until way later. <laughs> it's funny. I have been really enjoying the Dongan Rampa series lately. I've I've talked about it a couple times on stream now. I had Dang Dongan Rampa Decadence for like a year. 
<laughs> before I actually like finally played it. <laughs> I had it like on my shelf for like over a year. And uh, I only just played it like a couple months ago and now I'm like low-key obsessed with it. Um, and yeah, it's really funny. <laughs> How I am sometimes. Hey, Arcanine says, who needs new games when you have Pokemon? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It do be that way. Dabber Kirby says, Legends Arceus is definitely uh, one of the games that uh, benefits a ton from taking it slow because there's so much to explore. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. There's just... I, I always forget how satisfying it is. Like, sneaking around and, and like, nailing the, like... Basically trying to, like, optimize your, your run to, like, catch as much as possible and, like, fill out uh, deck sentries, like, simultaneously. Be like, oh, I need... I need to hit you with grass moves. I need to get leafage. Uh, I need to use leafage 20 times on Rowlet. And I need to use 20 strong moves on Rowlet. So it's like, okay, let's hit Geodude 20 times with strong style leafages. And it's just like, I don't know. There's something really satisfying about trying to like combine as many um, uh, tasks as possible. It's really fun. Yeah, no, trying to beat Legend Arceus fast. I, I, I can tell you that from experience as well, Jackie. Trying to beat Legend Arceus as quickly as possible is so freaking... It, one, it's kind of hard. <laughs> it's, like, actually really hard because it doesn't expect you to, like, rush through. Um, But, yeah, no, it's... um, it, It's just... It's also just not fun to do it that way. It's really not fun. I knocked out an entire playthrough of it really quickly so I could get, a, get an extra Enamorous for my uh, Origin decks. And, yeah, it was... It was kind of a, a bummer. <laughs> it was it was just there was lots of just like mashing and like I died a bunch because like my Pokemon were under leveled and stuff. Um, really 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 bummy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nuzlocking is. I honestly I don't recommend. I do not recommend Nuzlocking in. Um, I don't recommend Nuzlocking in Legends Arceus just in general. Obviously, like for the Forever Lock, kind of have to, but. <laughs> Um, and if, outside of that very specific scenario, like, if you were just, like, oh, I want to do, like, a casual Nuzlocke, uh, I would pick every other Pokemon game before I pick Legends Arceus, um, because, yeah, it's just, it's just not built very well for that sort of thing. Definitely not. SPS says, maybe I should get a Steam Deck. I recommend it. Uh, I love the Steam Deck. It's great. It's great. Um, hilariously, I don't really have a whole lot of games on Steam. I have a few, uh, and I can't play them on the Steam Deck, which is cool. Um, but I use it primarily as an emulation machine, and it's fucking amazing. It, it's so crazy being able to play, like, GameCube and PS2, like, on a handheld. It's really fucking cool. Um, and yeah, like, there, there, there's these really, like, awesome, like, um, like, community-created, uh, like, programs and applications and stuff like that that, like, allow you to, like, make these really cool, fancy UIs. Like, I can put GameCube games on, like, the Steam like the Steam operating system menus. So it's like I can I can just, you know, be like, "Oh yeah, I have a uh, freaking Ace Attorney and um and, you know, uh, uh you know, a few Steam games. Like actual Steam games on my on, you know, on my Steam page. But then I also have like Wind Waker for Dolphin and <laughs> and and Pokémon Coliseum and you know, uh, friggin' a ton, a ton of other, like, emulated games, like, all in one spot, which is really cool. <laughs> it's really cool, it's really cool. Okay, get up with Dragon Claw. Take it easy, Arcanine, thanks for being here. I'm probably not gonna be streaming for much longer anyways, so no worries, take care. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely emulate some Virtua Fighter, absolutely, SBS. Absolutely, if you're willing to put in the time, um, I recommend checking out SBS, um, if you're interested. Um, there is a YouTube channel called Retro Game Core, uh, at Core as in, like, C-O-R-P-S. Um, Retro Game Core. They do videos on, like, a bunch of, like, um, basically, like, emulation handhelds. Um, like, because there's a lot of companies that make handhelds for, uh, emulation purposes. Um, but anyways, uh, he has a really awesome, like, explanation video and, like, kind of, like, tutorial on how to set up a Steam Deck for, like, awesome emulation experiences. Highly recommend checking that out if you are interested in uh, getting into that sort of deal. Um, it's a good time. It's a good time. Okay. Dot Larry, let's get you. Um, are you... You're psychic and bug, right? I guess this is fine.
Get him with the thunder shock. My specialty says I went to an arcade bar with a Virtua Fighter 4 cabinet, uh, and maybe I was drunk, but that was the most fun fighting game I've ever played. Oh heck yeah! Oh, uh, Catherine, one two three four four, welcome. Hello, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. I did see that you followed. I have no idea why my um, why my alert did not come up for that. It was very strange, but I did see you followed. Thank you for the follow. Um, okay. Earthquake at pain. I know it technically resists, but. Beautiful. Okay, cool. <laughs> Dapper Kirby says, Legends of Arceus is also one of the best Pokemon soundtracks, in my opinion. Uh, my favorite since the the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, for sure. Yeah, I know. Lots of really good, uh, fancy remixes of um, Sinnoh music, which Sinnoh has fantastic music, no question there. So it's, it's, it's cool to hear a lot of those tracks. Um, in fact, it was so good that they reused it for some of the <laughs> Scarlet Violet DLC. So that's fun. <laughs> Uh, I'll skip ahead, but that's fine. Catherine says, I have this game, and I'm playing it right now on the Nintendo Switch. Heck yeah, I hope you're having fun with it. Hope you're having fun. Sword and Shield's a good time. It's a good time. It's a good time. I think, you know, Sword and Shield is a really good, um, uh, you know, it, it didn't have to be played in this context, but I think that Sword and Shield is a really good, like, um, starting game for, like, a new Pokemon player. Um, obviously, like, you know, a... a, a veteran of pokemon can play it and enjoy it as well but i think i actually think this is a really good tutorial game for like modern pokemon it's it's nice and simple it's not too complicated it doesn't go out you know out into the woods and show you all these like crazy mechanics or anything like that um i don't know i think it's a good it's a good opener good opener for for, for new pokemon fans i should say like I, I would i would give this game to my little sister or something like that for sure. Okay. Um. I guess let's uh let's fight Team Yell. Let's fight Team Yell, and I actually think we'll probably end on this today. Get get ourselves a, a lovely bike. I mean, yeah, Gen Six is good too. I I feel like there's parts of Gen Six that are a little complicated though. Um, I don't know. It's it's interesting. It's interesting. I don't know. I suppose it's up for debate. Is up for debate. Maybe Gen 6 is also. I don't know. I'm just right now. I'm feeling like Sword and Shield's nice and simple, and I kind of enjoy that. But Gen 6 also has that has that to a degree, so I can't necessarily disagree with you, Oak. <laughs> All right, beautiful. God, that's such a good track. Okay, we got the feeble. Not quite enough. Not quite enough. Shmaldi says Sword and Shell has a lot of quality of life things that help Box Link, although it's probably more uh, a little more challenging. Ah, oh, Box Link. We talked about it in a previous stream, but I, I just can't overstate the significance of Box Link. Box Link, it's one of those kinds of mechanics that's just like you don't know just how much it helps. Like how how convenient it is. Like it truly, truly is until you actually have it. Like once Box Link became a thing, it's like, God, how have I been playing Pokemon for 20 years um, and, and not had Box Link up until Sword and Shield? Like that's like actually insane. Um, I, I feel like I don't really need Ancient Power. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna pass. Yeah, no, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, it's I also think that Legends Arceus is uh, the evolution mechanic uh, is the same way. Like, God, I wish that was just like the standard. Um, I hope that Legends ZA brings that back, the way that Legends Arceus did it. Um, all, basically all like the, the the major mechanics. The major mechanics from Legends Arceus, bring them all back, put them in ZA, and then frankly, put them in the the, the, the standard mainline games too, okay? <laughs> like, please, I'm begging you. Being able to use Magmarizer instead of having to trade with it, can we make that the standard, please? Like, make it so it works with, like, both ways or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> like, appease everybody, damn it. Uh, Catherine wants to know what my favorite Pokemon is. My favorite Pokemon is Audino. Um... I have a little Audino plushie on my on my uh, on my avatar. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I like Audino, all-time favorite. What's your favorite Pokemon, Catherine? Um, okay, Sableye. 
Oh yeah, yeah, overworld sparkle effects for shinies, please. Please, K thanks. Agreed, Jackie. Agreed. I hope I hope that, that comes back. Oh, Pikachu, you're a Pikachu fan. Hell yeah. I love Pikachu. I actually had a kick in God, I wanna say let's say like freshman year of high school where I was like really, really into Pikachu. I was like collect I was like I kinda wanna just collect all the Pikachu like trading cards. And I did for a little while. I don't think I have them anymore. But <laughs> yeah, Pikachu's awesome. Who doesn't love Pikachu? Okay, Sableye down. Yeah, there's a reason it's a mascot. Yeah, he's cute. He's heckin' cute. Alright, another one down. No, monkey, you can't evolve. You are just baby monkey. You're too strong. If you stay in the gym challenge, you're gonna cause problems for our lady. You haven't seen the last of us. So we're gonna make sure you stay out of our lady's way. Beautiful. All right, I hadn't gotten to break into my my cockney voice uh, yet, so I <laughs> figured I'd at least get a couple lines in there. Very good. My word, you're quite the traitor. And I see you have a Pokedex too. That means you have Rotom with you. Fantastic. I think I'll give this bike to you then. Nice. We get the Rotom bike. How do y'all feel about Rotom bike? I, I I like it in theory. Admittedly, I'm getting kind of burned out on Rotom. And it's, I don't like that it slows down. I know that like they, you know, it was technically before like Legends Arceus did it. And then um, uh, Scarlet and Violet did it. Why do they put a, a cap on going fast? You got the, you press B. Rotom's like little electricity kicks in or whatever. And that's cool. But then there's like a cooldown? Why? Why is there a cooldown? Why would I why doesn't it let me go fast all the time? <laughs> you know what I mean? Is that like a weird nitpick? I don't know. It bothers me. Like well, okay, so it's fast like normally, but then you press B, you go faster, but you can't do that forever. You can like on like Weird Ear and uh Karidon. You could go fast forever in, in in those games. And hell, like, if you have the mock bike, you go crazy fast with, with, you know, no alternate speeds whatsoever. And then, hell, even in Gen 4, you have the bike that, like, has the different gears where you can go slow if you want, but you can also go fast if you want. And you just press the button, it changes the gear, and then you stay going fast the entire time. So I'm just sitting here like, why in the world did they put a cooldown on going fast on the bike? <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, anyways, it's weird. It's weird. Uh, it's just, you know, little nitpick that I noticed uh, last time I played Sword and Shield. Um, yeah, kind of wild. <laughs> um, well, in any case, um, on that on that note, uh, I am going to go ahead and get the heck out of here. Um, I'm going to go get another cup of coffee because I'm hella fucking tired after another poor night's sleep. Um, but um, it was fun. It was fun today. Uh, great conversations as always. Y'all, y'all always uh, treat me to some of the some of the most fun and goofy conversations. We talked about sandwiches. We talked about we talked about Digimon and and Smash Brothers and all sorts of good stuff. Shut up, SVS. So, yeah, we talked about spiders. Uh, great. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, lots of fun times. Um, definitely looking forward to the next stream as well. We will be back. Um, oh god, what is today? Today is. Hold on, I, I knew that I knew what day it was when we started. Uh, today's Monday, so okay, cool. Uh, the next stream will be on Wednesday. I promise. I promise. 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 The next stream will be on Wednesday. My apologies for the absences these last couple ones. Uh, I am working on being more consistent. Um, so yeah, thank y'all for being so patient with me and being so very understanding and supportive. Um, always, uh, always very, very uh, flattering and and fills me with joy <laughs> uh, to have y'all uh, be so supportive. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, so I will see you all on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific time for some more of the Forever Lock Challenge with Pokemon Shield. Um, I hope to see you all there. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.